Hey guys, it's Victoria and I create Glowforge content here on YouTube. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create a clean Glowforge file for printing. And what I mean by a clean file is this is going to be a file that when you upload it to the Glowforge app, you aren't going to have any issues. So for the first half of this video, I'm going to be walking through the fundamentals of what makes a clean Glowforge file. And for the second half of this video, I'm going to be actually going over a client of mine's logo and cleaning it up so they are able to print it on the Glowforge. All right, so now we're ready to get started and I'm going to be using Adobe Illustrator. All right, so now I have Adobe Illustrator opened and I already placed this drawing that I created on my iPad. So I have my drawing locked in place and now I'm just going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to trace over the drawing. I like to use the same colors in all of my files. For score lines, I use blue. Engraving, I use black. And for cut lines, I use red. And now that I'm done vectorizing the design, I'm just going to unlock this drawing and delete it. And now I'm just adding some text. Whenever you have text in your design, you're going to want to convert it to outlines. That way Glowforge will read it as shapes. I'm going to click on my text and then I'm going to go up to type and create outlines. When I'm creating a design in Illustrator, I make sure that I design it the exact size that I want to print it. That way I don't have to resize it at all when I upload it to the Glowforge app. Taking a closer look at this design, my cut line is just a stroke and my score lines are also just a stroke and my engraved shapes are just a fill. I always like to make sure that I don't have any open paths and to do that in Illustrator you go up to a window and then document info and then click on the little hamburger icon and then objects. Click and highlight your design and then over here you can see that I have two open paths. So now I'm just clicking on different parts of the design to see where those open paths are. If I click on this circle it says zero open so I know the open path isn't on this circle. Now when I click on my flower petals under paths, it says one open, so I know that's where my open path is that I need to fix. Okay, so now when I move the petals, I can see that there's a gap there, which means the two lines are not connected. So what I'm going to do is zoom in, and then using my direct select tool, I'm going to click on that spot in the middle and delete it. With the line highlighted, I'm using my pen tool, and I'm going to click on the anchor point at the end right here. And then I'm going to click on the anchor point across from it to connect the two lines together. So now when I click on the petals under paths, it says zero open. Click and highlight the whole design again. And I still have two open paths. I'm seeing a little dot right here, like in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to delete that. Okay, and that was one of the open paths. So now I still have one open. And again, I'm seeing another random dot right there, which I don't think should be there. And then I'm going to lock my circle design. And then using my direct select tool, I'm clicking and dragging on the circle. And then I'm highlighting that random anchor point and deleting it. Okay, so now one last highlight and I have zero open paths. Now everything is separate right now in the design. I click and drag and then hit Command G to group it all together. I don't have any overlapping shapes in this design, but if you do have overlapping shapes, it's important that you combine them together. Let's say you created a design with these two different shapes in it. Because they're overlapping, Glowforge is going to read all of these lines right here that overlap each other. So what we want to do is combine the shapes. And to do that, we're going to open the Pathfinder. So we're going to go to Window and then Pathfinder. And I'm going to click this first little icon here, which is Unite. And then that turns those two overlapping shapes into one solid shape. And then I just like to click and drag to make sure there's no random shapes out here that Glowforge is going to pick up on. And it looks like we are good to go. So I'm going to go up to File and then Save As. And then for the format, I'm going to change it to SVG. And I'm checking Use Artboards, Save. And then these are the settings that I like to use. For decimal places, I use three and then I keep these three selected. And then I click on OK. So what makes a clean Glowforge file? To summarize, a clean Glowforge file consists of separate colors for score, engrave, and cut, no overlapping shapes, any text is going to be outlined, 
There are going to be no open paths and no rogue anchor points or extra lines that shouldn't be there. So now I'm going to walk through how I clean up a client's artwork so he's able to print on his Glowforge. Alright, so here I have my client's logo opened up in Illustrator. And I just want to show you how the Glowforge app is reading this file. So I have his logo pulled up in the Glowforge app here. And as you can see, there are quite a bit of issues with the way that Glowforge is reading this. It wants to cut out a giant square around the logo, which we don't want. And also all of these shapes are filled in that shouldn't be. And there's also a bunch of lines that the Glowforge wants to cut that we don't want to be cut. So basically there's just a bunch of stuff that we need to correct in Illustrator. Now the first thing I want to do is delete any extra shapes that are around the design that we don't want to be there, like as you can see the square right here. So I'm going to use my drag select tool, click and delete that. Now if I drag this off my artboard, you can see that a bunch of stuff is filled in, which is why the Glowforge app is reading it that way. So what we want to do is get rid of all of these white fills. As you can see when I click on the individual shapes, over here there is a white fill. Okay, so first I want to ungroup everything so I can work on individual elements. And first I'm going to work on the arms. So I'm highlighting this entire left arm and then I'm going up to Window and then opening up my Pathfinder. And now I'm going to click on Divide, which is this bottom icon on the left. And then using my Direct Select tool, which is A on the keyboard, I'm clicking on the white fill and deleting it. So now I'm going to repeat those steps on the other side. Now the next issue is going to be with this big circle in the back. The way the Glowforge is reading it right now is it wants to engrave this entire white fill. So what we need to do is get rid of that. So we have two circles on top of each other. We have the black one in the back and then this white one on top of it. So what I'm going to do is click and highlight both of them. And then in my Pathfinder again, I'm going to click on Divide. And then again with my Direct Select tool, I'm going to click on the white circle and delete it. And then we have another half circle that doesn't have to be there, so I'm using my Direct Select tool and deleting that one. And it looks like we have one more, so I'm deleting that. And we also have the same type of thing going on with these rectangles. They're basically just two rectangles on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is click and drag on the black and white rectangle, and then click Divide in my Pathfinder. And then using my Direct Select tool, I'm just deleting that white rectangle. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this bottom one. This circle is cutting into the text, and we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is click on it. And you can see over here on the left, it has a white fill. So I'm going to get rid of that fill. So now the issue is there's a bunch of lines that are cutting into other parts of the design that we don't want to. Like for example, we don't want to have this line behind the text, and we don't want to have the arms coming into the circle. And then we obviously don't want this circle cutting into the text and the rectangles. To cut these shapes off where I want them, I'm going to use the Pathfinder, and again I'm going to use that Divide tool. So with my pen tool, I'm just going to create a shape over this part of the design that I want to delete here. So clicking on this shape and then clicking on the arm, I'm going to go over here to my Pathfinder and click on Divide. I'm going to highlight that shape I just created along with the design that is below it, then hit Delete a couple of times. And I'm just going to continue to do that method for the rest of these parts that I want to cut off. Now I just noticed that this circle here is actually a stroke and not a shape, so I don't have to use that Pathfinder design technique. So I'm hitting C on my keyboard, the cut tool, and then I'm going to click on these two anchor points and then hit delete. And then I'm doing the same thing along the bottom half of the circle. My client is going to be engraving all of the black parts and then scoring all of the blue parts. So I actually want to take these strokes and convert them into filled shapes. I'm dragging and highlighting them, and then I'm going up to Object, Path, and then Outline Stroke. 
So now instead of just being strokes, they are going to be read as shapes. And now if I click and highlight here, you can see we have some overlapping shapes. I want to convert this into one solid shape. To do that, we're going over to the Pathfinder and then clicking on Unite. And now we have this outer circle that's overlapping the rectangle, so I'm going to click on both of those and then hit Unite again. Okay, so now this middle engraved section is all one shape and it's ready to go. And now we just need to connect the arms to it. Holding down shift and then using the direct select tool, we're going to click on this middle engraved portion and then click on the three line portions of the arm and then click on Unite in the Pathfinder. Now if I zoom in here, you can see that the arm is now connected to this middle circle. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now we no longer have any overlapping shapes. And the client is going to be scoring the text part of the design. So what I'm going to do is just click on the text. And then I'm going to switch the color from being a fill to a stroke. Clicking on my fill color in the back and then clicking on the red line to get rid of that. And then I'm going to double click on my stroke, bring that to the front. And then now I'm just picking a blue color. And the stroke looks pretty big, so I'm going to change my stroke size to 0 0.0015. And now I'm bringing my design back onto the artboard where it's easier to see. Now I'm just zooming in and checking everything out. See how these W's are overlapping? We don't want that, so I'm just going to click on these two and drag them over a little bit. My stroke is going out a little bit too far here on the B. I'm going to outline the strokes of this text so it's easier to edit. So again, I'm going up to Object, Path, and then Outline Stroke. And I'm going to zoom back into that spot there. Using the Minus tool, I'm clicking on this anchor point here at the end and deleting it. And I need to drag this one out a little bit further, so I'm using my Direct Select tool, double-clicking on the anchor point and dragging it out. And then here I need to create anchor points. So with my pen tool still selected, I'm clicking on the plus tool to create an anchor point here at the end. And then hitting minus on the keyboard, I'm deleting this anchor point at the top. As you can see, there's a line going down the middle, so we don't want that. So using my direct select tool, I'm clicking and then highlighting that shape. And that looks like just something extra that we can delete. Now I want to check to see if there's any open paths, so I'm going to go up to Window and then Document Info. And then I'm going to click and highlight the design. Under Paths, we have zero open. Okay, so this logo should be good for Glowforge printing, so I'm just going to click and highlight the design and then group it. And now I'm going to File and then Save As. Format, I'm using SVG and then selecting Use Artboards and then Save. And then these are the settings I'm using, Decimal Places 3 with these three bottom things selected. And then I'm hitting OK. So now I'm just opening it up in my Glowforge app. This is how it's looking. Everything is looking good. So for this first layer, we want to score it. So I'm going to click on score and then high quality. And then the second layer is going to be the engrave portion. So I'm going to click on engrave and then HD graphic. And this bottom layer is going to be our cut layer. So I'm just choosing cut and then proof grade cut. And that is how I clean up artwork for printing on the Glowforge. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider subscribing. And I'll also include my referral link in the description where you can get anywhere from $125 to $500 off your Glowforge. And I'll get paid that amount as well. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.